Hey guys, welcome back to the third installment of the Navigation 101 series. In today's video, I'm going to have a special guest talk all about triangulation and how to use a compass and a map if you are lost. <music> If you have not watched the two other videos in this series that I made, please go check those out before you watch this video because there are some things that I mentioned in that video, especially in the first one on how to read a map, that are going to be super important to know in this video. So go check those out, I will have them linked below. So this is James, my husband, my special guest for this triangulation segment, orienteering. orienteering segment of this series. First, we are going to go over the different compasses and why we are using the one we're using. So today we'll be using this compass that uh, not only has a mobile bezel for being able to make adjustments so that if you're uh, walking in low visibility situations where there's lots of clouds and you can't get a reading, um, that's really handy for then just being able to walk down your bearing and just keep your needle inside the uh, sight line. Other than that, uh, it also has an adjustable internal bezel that you set for declination for your specific location, which you will look up ideally before you go on your trip. Uh, frequently, it will be on the key of the map, but not always. But it's something that you can always look up because where the needle points is not actually where north is for maps. It's magnetic north, which where we are located is approximately 14 and a half degrees off of where actual no map north is so but we that have degree number varies where you are in the depending country. on where you yeah. are in the world this particular compass has an adjustment on the back you can put in a screwdriver and give an adjustment and i have already done that to this compass where i have adjusted it 14 and a half degrees off of magnetic north to give me map north so for this we also have a pencil handy and this is something you should probably always have a pencil or a pen or a sharpie Little i always carry grease pencil or something yeah like i that. always carry like a sharpie in my bag just in case i need to write like a big sign or something so maybe carry something like that in your first aid kit it will be really handy for triangulation we are not actually out in the wilderness today but we're going to take some theoretical readings to viewpoints that would be around us at that location we've been hiking somewhere south of subtle lake so hypothetically speaking, a dog chased, uh, got chased by yellow jackets and we had to track him down and ran for more than a mile in various directions to hunt the dog down. And during that time period, we were distracted and didn't take note of where we were. So by the time we found the dog, we know we're somewhere south of Subtle Lake, but we're not sure what road is closest to us or where we might be. We did manage to hike to a point where we could get some views though. Even though we can see here that we're very likely on Cache Mountain already because of what we hiked up and it's one of the higher points here, but we're, we're not 100% sure. So we're gonna look around and see what we can find. And we're gonna use our compass to take some bearings off of geological features that we can see around us. We can take our reading with our compass and see that, that indeed this direction is north and so we get a general trend. So the map is set down here in a general orientation of what we expect to find. And we look to this side here to us, to our east, and we see that we have a hill. This is the only big hill in the area, so we're going to assume that that hill is Black Butte. I'm going to look down the side of the compass, looking down towards the butte. And while I do that, 
I'm going to also make note of where the bezel is and I'm going to turn it so that north lines up perfectly with the north on the bezel. Now when I get both lined up, when I can see down the edge of the compass and see my sight, Black Butte, and this is in its zone here where it's saying it's going pointing directly north, I can then look here at the front and see that I am at 82 degrees. So 82 degrees is my bearing. So then I can look down here at the map and I will line these lines up with the bearing lines. These blue lines on the map are the bearing lines and I can line that up with those blue lines and you can see that if I get the needle lined up with magnetic north and I have this at 82 degrees, my line points directly back to where I am. Now, I don't necessarily know that this is where I am yet. So at this point, if I were just truly getting a reading off Black Butte, I would do the line at 82 degrees, and that's where the pencil comes in handy. And I'll draw a line. I know that as long as my reading is correct, that I am somewhere along that line. That's where the second object comes in. So now we can look up this direction and we can see Three Fingered Jack, the mountain. And we can see the top of it. We understand and are pretty confident that it's Three Fingered Jack for sure. Then at that point, what we'll do is we'll again, look down the side of the compass from the location that we are. And so I would be looking down this direction here and I would line then this up while looking down that direction. And then I would see that my uh, measurement comes to approximately 332 degrees. So then we get a line that comes back from free th Three Finger Jack like this. And that crosses here. So that tells me that I am at this location. If one is not 100% sure of your readings or that your location, that your, your point that you're going to is exactly the point that you think it might be on the like map. Like there's numerous hills. Mm, exactly. I don't know which of the two points are is the specific mountain that I see on the map. Then it's wise to choose a third destination. And in this instance, it's easy to see Belt Nap Crater from that same location. So if we do exactly the same thing, so we'd be standing on the top of this, looking down this, and then line up the bezel with the north, then look at your bearing line off the front, your travel line. You know, we can see that we're approximately 204 degrees. So at 204 degrees, if we draw our line going to belt nap, we can see that all three of the lines intersect at Cache Mountain, where we thought we were originally. So that is how you would use triangulation to figure out your specific location if you, for some reason, became disoriented and were no longer aware of your specific location. Okay, so now we've figured out that we're on Cache Mountain, but we need to get back to Subtle Lake. So to get from Cache Mountain to Subtle Lake, and we were parked on the east side of Subtle Lake, So what we'll do is get our reading here mm -hmm. and we can see that that is at 38 degrees. So what I can do is at this point, I can take this off of the map and I can hold it in my hand. And as long as that needle is pointing into the north setting here, I will follow the arrow down the line of the compass. And it's in this situation, if you can't see, if the fog has come down, there's other or visibility you're in a forest, issues. Or all just of a sudden. In, exactly. Forest trees all around you. <clears throat> it, it may seem silly, but even if it's only a couple hundred yards, always take your compass out and pick a specific tree or rock that is as close to what your line is and then walk to that point. And when you have reached that point, take a new reading to a new tree or rock so that you're continuously walking in the right direction mm -hmm. and, and you're not deviating not like from your path and, yeah, and, and going working, all which way. around. Now we're gonna talk about a situation where you may not have a lookout point or you get to a hill, like let's say you see a hill in the woods, you go up there, oh, it's still all forest. That happens so many times in Oregon where you get to a precipice and there's actually no view. So 
this is a situation that we're not going to show what you would do in that kind of scenario. So in this scenario, we're going to assume that we're in the middle of some woods and that we don't have geographical features that allow us to understand that we're on a butte. We've been hiking around. Every time we come into a ridge of some kind, there's another ridge that's taller that keeps us from being able to see trees from keeping us to see out into the watersheds. Can't tell where the creeks are. You're basically hiking around the woods and you don't know where you are. At that point, what you want to do is, of course, figure out before you even hike around at all, figure out where is north. you know, what your orientation is. So you can at least start. So if I don't know where I am in this area, I'm just gonna at least say, okay, I'm going to hike. And in this particular instance, my concentrations of roads and other, other human contact are much more likely to the north. So I'm going to try to go north. And if I don't know where I am in this area, then I'm going to simply pick a bearing based off of my best guess of where I am that puts me into proximity of something that will be able to identify. I'm pretty much going to hike straight north. At that point, you would just be using your compass and following mm -hmm. the straight path until you bisected a road or some other occurrence, power line, railroad track, mm -hmm. something that let you know that you were in that location. And then as soon as you hit a power line or a road, you can then use that. If there's a road number on it, then you can use that as you know that this is your line. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I just popped out on road 2066, but I don't know where I am on this whole long road. And I really don't want to hike an extra couple miles. I'm already tired. I've already hiked north straight up to that road. So when I'm at this location, I'll treat this as my bearing line. And so what I'll do is I'll get my compass out and I'll say, okay, I know road 2066 runs pretty much at 68 degrees. There's one of my triangulation lines. Now, as soon as I, as I walk along this road, if I can find any other site that I can see something and understand what it is, if I can't tell from the gradient lines, then I can hopefully see something, the, the edge of the lake, maybe I can see Black Butte from over here, and at which point I can do a second reading line off of where I am. And if the top of Black Butte happens to sit at 100, degrees, then I know that I am right here on road 2066 and that I pretty much have an equal walk whichever direction, direction I go. That would be a bad situation. <laughs> so, um, but you would still know where you were. Essentially, you are just going to hike in a given direction that is the closest direction to whatever you think will get you out. And then once you strike something that is identifiable of any form, then, then do, do another triangulation off of it and you'll get your specific point along the road or along the creek. Well, thank you so much for watching this Navigation 101 series. If you have any questions whatsoever, just put them down below and I'll make sure to get to them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next adventure.